so this is Wong Tao Khan. Uh, to be Dr. Wong Tao Khan of January. I'm his advisor. I have an honor being his advisor. And uh, what to say about you? Um, well, one thing that uh, uh, is uh, unusual uh, with Wong Tao is that uh, he is uh, following his dream, uh, not uh, being taken by the water that flows. Uh, so about two and a half years ago, uh, he came uh, uh, to me and uh, said, OK, I'm an experimental uh, graduate student. He was in material science in experiments for a year and a half, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, I feel like I can be a theoretician, and that's what I uh, see myself. And uh, I ask him, uh, uh, okay, so what do you know about uh, uh, theoretical physics, tools, feeling of quantum mechanics? And uh, he was very keen in all this. Uh, the funding uh, group, which was the Princeton National Lab, uh, who had money to fund his uh, uh, graduate studies uh, and who I collaborated with, uh, they said, okay, why don't you test him, okay? And uh, I test him and the uh, tests uh, were quite uh, impressive. Uh, so I told them that, they say, test him more, okay, test him more, okay. Um, and uh, I did it, okay, and uh, he was uh, uh, well doing in all these tests. Uh, so uh, I think one of the biggest, best things that I have done in my 41 year career in science is uh, to promote him to a graduate in theory, okay, because uh, uh, I think uh, I learned some physics in these 40 years, I learned something about people which is much more complex, but uh, uh, what is important is I learned to distinguish between diamonds and a piece of glass. So here we have a diamond, uh, Thank you. so you will still hear about him, whatever he decides to be his uh, uh, life uh, uh, activity after uh, gaining his PhD. I mean, if I try to break him, so what can I say? Uh, personal integrity, A. Motivation, A. Creativity, A. Hard work, A. Self-minded, A. Uh, initiative, A. Uh, ability to talk about his work, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see today. <laughs> Thank you for telling the long, but uh, you, 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 you make it very concise, a good story. Uh, so today I'm also going to talk about something about the boron nitride diamond. And uh, this is some, uh, the synthesis of boron nitride nanomaterial is a major part in my uh, PhD research. And I hope I can uh, bring you some insight uh, about it. And actually, the presentation here will be some kind of uh, uh, series of movie show. And the movie is, of course, a movie about the research results. Hope you will enjoy. Uh, so. Uh, Start with the introduction. Uh, I'm going, going to introduce the uh, basics of the boron nitride, different uh, structure of boron nitride materials. Uh, first of all, we can uh, make an analogy uh, of boron nitride to a better known material, which is carbon. <coughs> oh, what's going on? So boron and nitride, they are intermediate uh, neighbors to carbon in the periodic table. So when they form 
uh, com uh, uh, complex, uh, the BN structure is uh, isoelectronic with those bonded carbon uh, structures. So we can find many correspondence between BN structure and the carbon structure. For example, uh, the hexagonal form of BN is, uh, we can check the structure itself. It is very, uh, looks very like the, the graphene. And uh, by stacking the different layers, we, uh, we get a hexagonal BN, which is an uh, analogy to the graphite. And also, uh, by folding those uh, hexagonal layers of hexagonal network, we can get uh, BN fluorine corresponding to the carbon fluorine. And also, boron nitride nanotube corresponds to carbon nanotubes. So they all compose of hexagonal honeycomb lattice, and all atoms are in sp2 hybridization. Uh, in, in layer, the bonding is co uh, uh, for for carbon material. The the bonding is covalent, and uh, for BN it is slightly different because BNN has different negativity. Uh, it's uh, t uh, more ironic. But between layers, uh, both HBN and uh, carbon graphite uh, share the same force van der Waals uh, interaction. And actually, their interlayer distance are quite similar. Uh, 3.3 uh, 3 .3 angstrom and 3.4 angstrom. And uh, so th these, mater these materials are in sp2 hybridization. And correspondingly, we can find correspondence uh, for the sp3 hybridized materials, the cubic form BN and the cubic form carbon, which is diamond. Uh, in, in the cubic form, all atoms are in sp3 hybridization. And we all know that uh, diamond is the hardest material in, in the world. And uh, cubic form BN is uh, actually the second hardest. I mean, in bulk, be because uh, there has been recent research. Uh, um, they find an, a new material called Q Q phase carbon, and that uh, that phase uh, is said to be uh, 10 to 20 percent harder than diamond, but it's only uh, it can only be uh, synthesized in uh, nanocrystal, not in bulk. So those uh, two materials, cubic form BN and diamond, are actually the top two hardest in bulk. And the difference between boron nitride and uh, uh, carbon material, just as I uh, mentioned, is the electronegativities between the two uh, elements. So in BN structure, the bonding are in ionic form. And also because of the different uh, nat uh, nature of two uh, elements, the stacking of HBN layer is different from uh, graphite and tends to be a boron stacking on top of N and N on top of uh, a boron because they have uh, some sort of uh, uh, ironic interaction. And uh, because of this uh, ionic uh, bonding nature, uh, the BN structure, the BN materials, oh, usually have higher thermal and chemical stability than, uh, than, dam than diamond in a wider temperature range. Uh, also, uh, uh, a difference uh, between HBN and uh, carbon hexagonal form carbon is HBN has a, a large uh, homolumo band gap, while uh, carbon graphene is a good conductor. But both of them are good thermal conductor. And uh, so BNT similarly is an insulator uh, as opposed to the uh, carbon tube, which is uh, metallic or semiconductor. And uh, for BNT, it, the property is independent of chirality. 
as opposed to carbon nanotube, uh, where the weather uh, depends on the chirality, it can be metallic or uh, semiconductor. So uh, those uh, those exceptional properties in those many applications, for example, boron nitrile tube, it has um, been widely used in aerospace and uh, astrospace uh, applications, for example, the mask for the astronaut, because it has a, a, a good uh, neutron absor absorbing uh, performance. So, why boron nitride forms BN intermittent uh, bonding instead of BB or NN bond? Uh, that is because BN bond is energetically favorable. Uh, that is about four electron volts uh, higher than the BB bond and NN bond. So, uh, as a result, uh, in if the uh, in the struct in any BN structure, uh, usually the even number ring is favorable because they can form boron and nitride uh, bonding uh, alter in alteration. And all the numbered rings will uh, appear in some form of defect. Say if we have a five member ring uh, by connecting those two borons and uh, the others stay the same, there will be a BB bond which is lower than the energetically favor favored BN bond. So, uh, so we can uh, notice from those two structures, those are the uh, extracted spe uh, pieces from HBN and CBN. As we can see, uh, all the boron and nitrogen are bonded in alteration. Uh, boron in HBN, uh, sorry, boron in HBN is bonded to three nitrogen. Uh, vice versa, and also in cubic form uh, boron nitride, each nitrogen is bonded to four boron, and each boron bonded to four uh, nitrogen. So, uh, because of this uh, nature, the BN bond is favorable uh, in the self-organization process. A mixture of boron and nitride um, uh, atoms will favor the creation of those uh, HBN and uh, perfect HBN and CBN structures. And uh, finished with the properties uh, and structure of the boron nitride uh, materials, uh, we come back to the synthesis. So, what are the current understanding? Uh, and models for the nanosynthesis of boron nitride nanomaterials. Um, uh, well acknowledged uh, uh, model is the root growth model, where we start uh, the, the claim uh, the synthesis starts from a boron cluster, and upon bombardment of nitrogen atoms to the cluster, uh, the cage uh, or uh, Boron nitride nanotube, uh, actually the layer is in HB, HB in hexagonal form where uh, uh, hexagons are favored. Uh, so they claim from this bombardment of N toward the root, which is the boron cluster, we can build boron nitride nano, uh, nanotube. And this model is possibly confirmed by the stimulation by Alta in 2016. Uh, be, uh, in that stimulation, uh, he bombarded nitrogen towards boron at 2,000 Kelvin with each four picosecond in between bombardment. And finally, it, uh, the boron nitride nano cage, we can equally call it BN fullerene, is formed. But the problem is, in his simulation, he didn't get the, the structure grow into nanotube. It's just a spherical-like cage. And also, another problem is, this growth uh, is only um, by nitrogen bombardment. And once the bone is consumed, 
uh, how can we get additional feedstock for boron? And uh, this, uh, actually, this mechanism from my recent simulation, uh, we find it is it might be problematic. So what we do, we put a boron nitride nanotube template on a surface of a liquid boron. Uh, this is uh, just uh, an analog to a very big, uh, big size boron droplet uh, compared to the diameter of boron nitride nanotube. So, the periodicity is yes, the periodicity in x y direct. There is a periodicity boundary condition in x y. Uh, direction and as we can see uh, starting from uh, BNT uh, and upon bombardment uh, uh, of BN molecule and also we tried to just uh, leave it on the surface uh, after about one nanosecond finally the boron nitride nanotube will dissolve on the surface because boron uh, sorry the nitrogen can diffuse on surface uh, it has a good uh, high mobility on the liquid boron droplet surface. So that will result in the uh, dissolution of boron nitride nanotube on the surface. So from this simulation, we uh, have uh, questioned this uh, root growth mechanism. Uh, another research by uh, an experimentalist, Kim, in 2014, uh, give the similar, uh, he proposed a similar assumption like root growth mechanism, where the feedstock is uh, from uh, HBM powder, where the, 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 in the feedstock it's already B and N uh, bonded in alternation. So when the HBM powder is supplied to the high temperature plasma, everything will dissociate and dissociate into isolated boron and nitrogen and hydrogen atomic species. And uh, with the flow of the plasma, uh, uh, you can see here, uh, they can achieve a high cooling rate in the reactor, decreasing the temperature from 8,000 Kelvin down to uh, as low as several hundred Kelvin. And during this process, uh, first they claim there is formation of nano-sized droplet of boron, and then uh, HBM, uh, uh, boron and nitrogen and hydrogen together forms uh, HBN complex species. And the rule of hydrogen here is to prevent the, uh, the association of nitrogen uh, radicals because nitrogen can nitrogen radicals can easily form N2 molecules because the bonding uh, energy of N2 is uh, the triple bond is uh, lar larger than nine electron volt so it is easy for the nitrogen radicals to associate and they claim the hydrogen the rule of hydrogen here is to prevent the association and that's why they claim uh, HBN complex species is the, the active feedstock in this growth. But we perform the simulation according to their scenario by bombarding the, the boron droplet, which is in liquid form, with uh, H2B and H2, which is a, 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 a major species in, in the reactive uh, temperature range and finally we cannot grow into any ordered HBN structure ne neither a cage or boron nitrogen on the tube so here hydrogen influ influences the disordered configuration and later I will uh, introduce uh, my uh, understanding on the hydrogen uh, effect but here, uh, hydrogen doesn't uh, do the role as they expected. And thirdly, there is uh, another work by experimentalist. Uh, they put the they use the the plasma torch in nitrogen at high temperature, 
and inject it with boron droplets. Uh, but here the nitrogen is, uh, is in a few atmospheres, so the density of nitrogen is higher than previous studies. Uh, but uh, so they claim with high temp a uh, high pressure of nitrogen, they can grow boron nitrogen on a tube, while at lower temperature, boron nitrogen doesn't react completely and just resulting into nanococoons. And uh, our simulation by bombarding the boron droplet with nitrogen uh, confirms the growth of nanococoons, but. Uh, the question raises how to grow it into a nanotube with high aspect ratio. Finally, uh, this is the uh, theoretical study by Otta. Uh, he, did, he performed the uh, quantum classical molecular dynamic simulation using uh, NCC DFTB and uh, by bombarding the boron droplet with nitrogen atoms, as I mentioned in the first study. Uh, he produced another cage, and the size was defined with the initial size of boron cluster. So this is the approach uh, that inspired our study, as I will introduce in the following slides. So what novelties uh, will we report? Firstly, we will report a direct nanosynthesis uh, of uh, boron nitrogen nanostructures uh, without using catalyst or uh, boron droplet as a center, as a target cluster, uh, just by self organization of boron nitride diatomic uh, molecules. And uh, also, we report the synthesis of nanoflakes by hydrogen rich species uh, bombarding at boron cluster. And uh, thirdly, the growth of boron nitride on a tube with BN dimer as feedstock, which is never simulated in previous studies. And also, finally, we uh, simulated the synthesis of cubic form boron uh, by two approaches. First, using hydrogen containing species at a boron cluster, and also using the phase transformation uh, from uh, amorphous uh, phase. Uh, boron nitride uh, nanocluster. All of this condition, uh, all of these studies are under condition for volume synthesis in the high pressure arc plasma as opposed to like CVD where the, the, the growth will initiate it from a surface. And everything happened in this study are in volume without any support. So uh, and our approach is uh, quantum classical molecular dynamics, similarly, uh, similar to Otta's uh, approach. So first, I, uh, I showed here a, a first movie clip uh, showing the synthesis of BN following the BN nano cage from BN self-organization of boron nitride dimers. So we start from a BN uh, dimer and bombard with uh, other BN dimers. This is just um, mimicking the process where uh, in a soup of boron nitride dimers, different dimers colliding together and finally form a, a order structure. And as, as you will see, after uh, just a, a few hundred picoseconds, uh, here it shows after 66 BN dimer collisions, we can form uh, somewhat, somewhat like a cage. And uh, with 120 BN uh, collisions, we can form a cage-like structure. And uh, during the process, uh, there, the, the nitrogen is, uh, shows slightly lower uh, implantation rate because nitrogen can form N2 during the process. Uh, and from the ring uh, analysis on different type of hexagons, we can see the hexagonal ring increases uh, steadily, while others, other type like pentagon and septagon serve as a defect, and they have a low number. 
so I can move forward and you can check uh, the absorption of BN dimers on the surface and incorporate it uh, by organization of the whether it is side chain or side flake into the structure. And finally we can we can see a cage like structure uh, formed. So the second piece is uh, by using hydrogen rich feedstock by using hydrogen rich feedstock we can grow into uh, two dimensional structures uh, we can also call it nanoflakes so this, this is uh, the BN flake grown by self organization of BNH molecule BNH. yes so uh, we stimulated the, the self-organization of BNH molecule soup. So we can see it gradually growing into a planar structure where hydrogen is saturating the boundaries of this planar. It doesn't allow it to float. Yes. So as I said here, uh, we need to have a large number of hydrogen atoms as shown in this uh, plot. Hydrogen atom is uh, just around the same number of boron and nitrogen because it needs a certain number of hydrogen to saturate the boundaries. Otherwise, those boundaries, uh, they may just uh, by chance close together, forming the uh, ionic bond, and then forms fullerene or nanotube. So uh, from this simulation, we uh, propose the the effect of hydrogen is to saturate the dangling bond of Vn and prevent them forming into a folded structure. And uh, this is another, another simulation by bombarding the boron droplet with NH3 molecules. So we can see uh, if we start from a boron droplet, uh, after 200 NH3 heats, we can first uh, int, uh, form an intermediate uh, cage-like structure. But with continuous uh, bombardment, uh, essentially we are providing more hydrogen to the structure, then the structure breaks. Hydrogen breaks the structure and forming into a, a planar structure. So uh, the hydrogen, uh, the effect of hydrogen here is also similarly uh, by bonding into the uh, defect uh, sites bonded with boron or nitrogen and break apart the cage-like structure. So after we simulated this uh, uh, nanoflakes, actually we uh, get confirmation from uh, another experimentalist, Kim, as I just introduced uh, his uh, study, uh, he also find the in the product we can find very small size flakes with uh, diameter of about one nanometer under TEM. So they can confirm the formation of small nanoflakes in the uh, experiment. And uh, thirdly. I, can, I will introduce the growth of boron nitride nanotube from a uh, zigzag template by bombarding the template with uh, BN dimer molecules. Oh, there is no movie clip here. So during this process, uh, the BN dimers will uh, come into the surface and uh, form, uh, form the side chains on the surface and diffuse by diffusion goes to the top where the, uh, the defects uh, exist and incorporated to the uh, defect area and grow into uh, boron nitride nanotube. And uh, we can check the, the uh, quality of this structure uh, during the whole growing process. The hexagonal ring is steadily increasing 
while other defective type uh, ring stays uh, low number. We can check the movie of growth here. So starting from a short template, and with the incoming BN dimers, uh, it first built some side chains, and side chains can migrate on the surface, and uh, because the uh, on the side of this tube, they are already uh, hexagonal rings, and only on the top of the tube there are pentagons or heptagon, uh, septagons uh, served as the de defective area, and those side chains will uh, migrate around, and once they find the defective area, they can easily incorporate because as I introduced, the BN bonding is much stronger than BB or NN. So the self organization tends to uh, help this uh, formation of a hexagonal ring on the top to heal the, defective, uh, the defect type rings. So I can move forward and we can see it's uh, gradually grow into a tube. And always we can find some defects. For example, at the top we can find some uh, agglomeration of boron, and those are defective area, and BN side chains can incorporate there. So finally, uh, starting from the lens about here, we grow into uh, uh, lens in, in triple. From this simulation, we, uh, we also compared different, uh, different parameters uh, like temperature and flux and compared how they can uh, affect the growth of boron nitrate nanotube. So we find those two crucial parameters. Temperature has to be in the right uh, range, uh, neither too low or too high. If the temperature is too high, uh, the, the nitrogen can have, uh, has a, a high mobility and tend to associate leaving the surface forming into molecules. If the temperature is too low, the BN side chains cannot effectively migrate to the defective area and just forms locally uh, some structure and tends to grow along the side instead of uh, elongation. And another parameter is the flux. Uh, we need to have relatively low flux of feedstock BN molecules and to allow enough time for the migration Otherwise, the BN side chains will quickly agglomerate and form side chains, grow into uh, something like the Baymax, <laughs> like in the Big Hero movie. So, with uh, increase, the flux decreasing, we can form more ordered tube-like structure. So we achieved the, the boron nitride non-tube growth without using template. But uh, here, uh, we need to find a way to break the symmetry because starting from a spherical-like cage, which, is easily, uh, which can be easily built from uh, boron droplet, uh, we need to break the symmetry. And in this simulation, we break the symmetry by only bombarding the structure from Z axis. And uh, so you can see if the BN molecules are only supplied along Z axis, we tend to grow the structure along those two directions. Similarly, we need to have a, a lower flux to allow the migration of the side chain, allowing them to find the best position of incorporation.
we can see after 200 BN molecule bombardment, we extend the cage-like structure to a tube-like structure with uh, aspect ratio of about three or four. So next uh, uh, part, I will introduce the growth of cu uh, cubic form boron nitride by particle irradiation towards the boron cluster. Previously, we find from a boron cluster, we can build a boron nitride nanotube and be in fullerene uh, and also be in nanoflake with, without hydrogen or with hydrogen. But those two uh, products uh, has to start from a small boron cluster with a uh, diameter smaller than 0 0.5 nanometer. Uh, because we find with larger size, larger than 0 0.5 nanometer, we tend to build a bore, uh, onion like BN cage, which is uh, the cage with concentric layers. And with the, uh, the addition of hydrogen in the feedstock, we will build a BN fullerene, which is a single layer cage, uh, not shown here, sorry. Uh, and what I want to stress here is uh, at a certain size, we can build cubic form BN or in the form of bucky CBN. The CBN is enclosed, partially enclosed by a HBN single layer cage. So as shown here, we start from a boron cluster. This, is, uh, this cluster has a diameter close to one nanometer. And then by bombarding with nitrogen, we can build double wall layer cage, uh, as can be seen from this analysis of the layers uh, from the center of mass, there are two peaks of uh, hexagonal rings. One appears at about four angstrom, another appears uh, at about 6.5 angstrom. So showing the two layers nature. And uh, by bombarding boron cluster with NH molecules, we built a C, bucky CBN structure and enclosed in this uh, circle, it is cubic form BN. And uh, out in the outer layer, there is a, a BN fullerene cage. So this is a, uh, similar to the bucky diamond as found in the carbon structure. So we start from the boron, boron droplet by bombarding with nitrogen. From this movie, I think it's easier to, to check the two layer nature. The outside layer is easy to observe and the inner layer you can find it has a uh, diameter of uh, this size. Uh, I'm not sure if you can uh, distinguish the inner layer, but from, density, from the density of a hexagonal ring, we can tell the two layers. And also, here I show the two movie clips forming a cubic uh, bucky CBN and uh, also, starting from a double wall cage bombarded with hydrogen, we can also build a CBN structure. Uh, at some snapshot, you may find a very uh, ordered crystal-like uh, rings, like if you check uh, the right movie, you can sometimes find uh, a good array of uh, hexagonal ring. Uh, let me see if I can find some good snapshot. For example, in this area, you can see the, the borons are aligned and nitrogens are aligned, they are actually the different layers in the 
cubic form, cubic form structure. And the analysis of uh, in Lindemann index, which is the uh, parameter to show the locally dis uh, disorder by thermal effect, uh, usually above, uh, if the index is above 0 0.1, the structure is considered uh, in liquid phase, and below 0 0.1, it is in solid phase. And by calculating those three structures uh, in the evolution of time, we can see uh, starting from boron, it quickly drops uh, below 0 0.1 and uh, entering the solid uh, form, uh, solid phase. And the double cage starting from a solid phase and uh, during the whole process it stays in solid. And the analysis of the hybridization number uh, sp3 versus sp2, from this ratio we can compare uh, in different structure uh, what proportion of uh, cubic form BN is formed. For example, in, the, uh, in, hyd in all hydrogen containing uh, bombardment, we can find a higher proportion, higher ratio of sp3 atom than sp2. Uh, uh, sorry, sp3 uh, uh, ratio than the the case without hydrogen. And this comparison uh, indicates the hydrogen atom promotes the transition of hybridization from sp2 to sp3. And uh, next, I analyzed the, the ring type in, in the uh, formed uh, cubic BN or Bucky CBN. So uh, I analyzed here uh, by counting the uh, number of sp2 atoms and number of sp3 atoms. Uh, we can get an estimated number of hexagon in the structure and compare it with the real number as shown here by the solid line. Uh, how can I uh, estimate it? So I uh, first find a sp2 planar structure in S HBN form. So each, uh, each atom is uh, associated with uh, three hexagons. And each hexagon is counted six times. So the ratio of hexagon compared to the number of atom is uh, three times the number of atom over six because each atom is counted six times. So uh, the estimated uh, hexagonal type uh, uh, six member ring is 0 0.5 times the number of atom. And similarly, we can count the number of six member ring uh, hexagons formed by sp3 at, uh, uh, atoms in the cubic form. So each center uh, sp3 atom uh, has four bonds. And by choosing randomly two of those four bonds, we can find, uh, we can form two hexagons with each choice of two bonds. And the choice is uh, see uh, the combination of uh, two out of four, so that is six. So six times two k over six that means uh, then if we have uh, k num uh, number of k atoms, which is in sp3 hybridization, we can expect 2k number of uh, six member ring. So we compared here uh, the total of SP sp2 hexagon and sp3 hexagon, and we can find they are close to the real number. This indicates uh, in our form the structure, we, uh, we get a perfect, uh, whether it is a combination of HBN with CBN or it is purely CBN. Uh, I didn't show here, but if I count it, count the similar, uh, if I use a similar analysis uh, of a hexagonal ring on the amorphous, uh, uh, tetrahedral BN structure, I would find uh, a big discrepancy between the estimated number of hexagons and the real number of hexagons. So from this analysis, I can prove 
uh, in, uh, in my form structure, uh, it, uh, it is whether purely CBN or it is a CBN combined with uh, HBN cage. Next, I analyzed the energy evolution during the growth. So uh, following the, uh, the energy of the center cluster, which is reported by DFTB, uh, I can show the, the potential energy of the cluster is following the change of total number of atoms, which is reasonable. Uh, and also I analyzed the, the change in formation enthalpy uh, by considering the whole system as a, uh, as a con containing constant number of atoms. Uh, so in the simulation, actually, uh, we uh, in the, reported by DFTB, the energy only contains the, the, the center, uh, only represents the center cluster. So, for example, if we bombard a nitrogen atom towards the center, it can uh, either leave on the surface or get reflected. And once it is reflected, um, we remove the, those atoms because uh, we want to accelerate the simulation, uh, but this removal will will change the n total number of atoms, and that's why this uh, cluster potential energy is changing uh, significantly. But uh, we analyze the the system by. Uh, if, if the atom is removed, we, uh, we add it to the, the energy, those removed uh, atoms' energy. So by this uh, modification, we just uh, uh, approximately simulated the system with conserved the number of uh, atoms. And that's why the chain uh, we, we show here, uh, change of the formation enthalpy, uh, the, 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 the meaning of this formation enthalpy is uh, the change of energy by uh, self-organization of boron cluster with nitrogen atoms. So the change is essentially the bonding between the, the boron atom with the nitrogen uh, atoms in the, in the uh, surroundings. So we show here during the whole process the formation en uh, enthalpy is negative and keeps decreasing. That, is, uh, that uh, confirms the nature of this uh, growing process where we build uh, from a, a morphous boron cluster into an order structure which is cubic form Bn. And analysis of entropy by calculating in gains uh, on the uh, cluster can also confirms the uh, the ordered structure. So at the beginning, there is increase of uh, significant increase of entropy. That is because at the beginning, the the number of atoms is increasing. So there are more available states uh, for the uh, cluster. The entropy is increasing, and when the number of atoms saturate, it uh, gets slowly decreasing which shows the, the, the cluster is self-organizing and uh, forming an a ordered structure. So lastly, I will show you the growth of cubic form Bn by phase transformation, as opposed to previous, previous case where the cubic Bn is formed by bombardment. Here we start from a, a, a amorphous a TaBn, the TABN means tet tetragonal amorphous. So it is in amorphous form, but the atoms are all in, or mostly in uh, sp3 hybridization. So uh, once we heated up the amorphous TABN in, uh, to 2000 Kelvin, it will slowly self-organize those sp3 uh, hybridized atoms and find uh, ordered arrangement, and finally we can get a uh, bucky CBN. You can see here, this part is well organized uh, and uh, enclosed by, in partially by the uh, HBN cage.
but if we further heat it up to 2500 Kelvin, this uh, uh, CBN will go out of its stable phase uh, and uh, transform into a more stable HBN structure. Similarly, I uh, analyzed the, the energy profile, uh, the formation and the formation enthalpy uh, here, it is almost stable, but it is slowly decreasing uh, because uh, the the self organization. And here, I also showed the comparison of uh, estimated hexagonal ring and the real hexagonal ring number. Uh, it shows a good agreement, and finally, we can see by heating up the structure to 2500 Kelvin, we finally result in a structure where most uh, hexagonal ring are in, uh, built up by sp2 hybridized uh, atoms. So we use the control uh, test to prove the effect of hydrogen. So we start from the similar, uh, the same structure of TABN at 1500 Kelvin and just to remove all the hydrogen atoms from the structure and also heat it up to 2000 Kelvin. And finally, we get a concentric double layer BN cage instead of, a, of cubic form BN. So the, the process of heating is the same and the starting structure is the same just without hydrogen. Then we will end up into the HBN form uh, onion-like cage instead of CBN. So this confirms that hydrogen can uh, help catalyze the transition of uh, hybridization from sp2 to sp3 and keep them at sp3 hybridization. So as I summarize, I uh, show here the synthesis of CBN nanocrystal. It can be built from a boron cluster bombarded with uh, hydrogen-containing species like NH molecule forming a CBN, bucky CBN at 2000 Kelvin. It can also be built uh, from a double cage uh, bombarded with hydrogen and also we can build up uh, CBN. And uh, thirdly, it can be built uh, from a phase transformation starting from a, a, tetrag a tetragonal amorphous form and heat up, heat up to 2000 Kelvin. And if we further heat up the CBN structure to higher temperature, it will leave the, the stable phase region. And at that temperature, uh, HBN form is more stable. So it will self-organize into a HBN cage. So the conclusion is uh, shown here. We report the new mechanism for nanosynthesis of BN structure by spontaneous uh, organization of BN dimers. And also hydrogen containing a feedstock uh, when bombarded to small cluster will build a two dimensional nano flake. And uh, on larger boron clusters, it will lead to the synthesis of cubic form BN. Uh, uh, also, we showed the growth of uh, nano cage and boron nitride nanotube into a high quality structure. Uh, and we, uh, by checking the polygon type, we show uh, it is mainly composed of hexagonal, um, hexagonal rings. And we show the uh, optimal parameter for synthesis of, cube, uh, of single wall BNT, which is a uh, high temperature around 50, uh, 2,500 Kelvin, and uh, lower feedstock to allow the migration of BN side chains. And CBN, bucket CBN, can be formed by the irradiation of hydrogen containing species uh, or by phase transformation. The, the effect of uh, the, the rule of atomic hydrogen here is to catalyze the change of hybridization state of BN in the atom from sp2 to sp3. Okay, so okay. we can have uh, questions. Okay, so before questions start, uh, two things. One, 
What time did you target? Time of the talk. Uh, Forty-five minutes. Yeah. So it came uh, almost one hour. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's important. I mean, uh, it's difficult, but, but uh, you have always to keep your talk in the target time. Sure. Uh, the main reason that you uh, have extended over 45 minutes is your introduction that went 25 minutes. Oh, okay. uh, that's uh, not a good idea. 15 minutes uh, for a talk of 45 minutes is maximum for introduction. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, next uh, comes uh, from this uh, uh, fam famous uh, Einstein uh, phrase. Uh, if you really understand something, you can explain it easily to your grandmother. Okay. Uh, so, uh, most of the things you explained well, but there were some holes, okay, uh, sure. where uh, you were going into circles. So, uh, these two things uh, qualify you, you for B in, uh, in uh, ability to talk, so you have to practice more than that, okay? Yeah. Uh, but uh, to be clear, I mean, I have given more than 100 talks at international conferences. I still have problems to manage my time, and sometimes I have problems to explain things. Uh, uh, clearly and easily. Uh, so uh, it's not really big minus, but it requires a lot of practice. Sure. So I suggest that you continue practicing it uh, for your friends. Okay? Thank uh, you. So questions? Any questions? Okay, so that means usually either nobody understood your <laughs> or they understood everything. Okay, so uh, we are not going to ask them what to say, okay? <laughs> so once again, thank you very much for uh, this inspiring talk. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah. thank you.